Alright, so let's get back to some of the subject at hand. One of the things I brought up a while ago at this point was what is the default position? What is the default position? Is it theism or is it atheism? Now, the default position, a couple of people were misunderstanding this and arguing with me for no particularly good reason. This really isn't optional, guys. It's really not. You either get this or you don't. You can debate me, bro, if you want to, but there's really nothing to debate. Default position means the position most common and easily ascribed to. That's an argument ad populum, Craig. It means the position most easily and commonly ascribed to. So, for example, if you are saying, what's the default position, Democrat or Republican? Well, it really depends. In Oklahoma, it's conservative Republican. In New York, New York, it's liberal Democrat. Do you see the difference? There's no debating it. Default position means most easily ascribed and, and, and most easily believed in and ascribed to. It's not even close, guys. <laughs> it's not even close. If you don't understand that definition of default position, you are creating cockamamie and not talking about what I want to talk about. And it's irrelevant because it's not really the real issue. Does that tell us anything about the existence of God? No. Does the fact that most people in Tulsa, Oklahoma are conservative Republicans tell us anything about whether they're right or wrong? No. Does the fact that most people in New York, New York are liberal Democrats tell us anything about whether the liberal Democrats are right or wrong? No. Just one place is default position and one, the other place, it's a different default position. If you take the world as a whole, the default position is pretty obviously theism versus atheism. Why? There are billions of theists and only a couple hundred million atheists. Ergo, default. And there's no getting around it. The more important question is why. The more interesting point of conversation is why. And the answer is because... The ascribing of agency is as common as grass. It is a natural mechanism of the human mind. That doesn't mean we are correct when we ascribe it. It just means you have to do some work to shut that mechanism off. It's there, almost automatically, by default. <laughs> almost automatically, by default. There are studies on this, guys. This isn't up for debate. It's one of the one of the arguments for atheism that that you know they call it overactive agency ascribing or something like that and apparently that's an explanation for why so many people believe in God but the fact of the matter is so many people believe in God that's unavoidable that's unavoidable so the question is why now you have to listen carefully and remember Brenda I gave you two options if you are still here there are two options on the table, Brenda. Grow up or go home. It's not negotiable. One or the other. Okay? If you're still here listening to me, good girl. Respect for that. That means you are growing up. That means you are listening and you are actually learning. Why? Because I don't see any of these like, here, I can't believe he said this. Those have mysteriously stopped happening, which means either stop listening to my video, your prerogative, or you're starting to grow up, which is a much more, which is much better, much better for you. I don't care ultimately which one you decide, but those are the only two options, Brenda. And if you are still here listening, respect. Respect. Here is the meal on the table. Humble pie. Eat it. And enjoy it. And enjoy it is the key, Brenda. Why? Because you don't know what you're talking about yet. Did you hear the key word at the end? Listen carefully. Not putting you down. I'm not putting you down. Listen more carefully. Giving you exactly what you need. You don't know what you're talking about yet. The sooner you humble yourself and get that through your head, the better off you will be. You want to seem smart, right? I want to show everybody how smart I am, Craig. I understand that. You can't do that until you know what you're talking about. There's no other option. You either grow up or go home. Everyone dumber than you and underneath you is a debate me bro clown. They aren't here challenging me because they can't. Period. Period. Because <laughs> there's no other option. They know that. That's why they aren't doing it. <laughs> Believe me. If they could intellectually bully me, they would. <laughs> they can't. And they know it. <laughs> That's why they aren't doing it. They try every once in a while and they get confused. So wait a minute. <laughs> they'll go like, well, it works out. <laughs> Run away. 
<laughs> no, it's not word salad. It's not word salad, Brendan, and you know that, Brendan, you know that. You are capable of nuanced thought. I get that. That's why you think you're so smart. This, I'm talking to Brendan particularly, but I could be talking to almost any atheist who is a debate me bro clown. I promise you this is true, guys. Get a clue. It's the same thing to you. Grow up or go home. No other option. There's no other option. You are nowhere near as smart as you think you are. If you are smart enough to be a philosophical atheist, which means you are capable of nuanced thought, which Brenda in fact is, Brenda, you are capable of nuanced thought, which means I'm going to start expecting you to use nuanced thought. Listen clearly to what I actually say, and if you disagree with the point, fine. But disagree with what I'm actually saying and have a nuanced position. The philosophical atheists are honest actors and they have nuanced positions. Now, I compare them to the top-shelf atheists. The top-shelf atheists, behavior-wise, are fine. I have no problem with them. And I've named the names. Paul Gia's, your vice rhinos, and your prophet of Zods. Now, what they are doing, they are still arguing against straw man versions of Christianity, and they're still arguing straw mans. Once upon a time, I was watching all their videos. I haven't watched their videos in a long time. Why? Because I don't have to. They aren't really on point right now. They will eventually, they're all capable of nuanced thought, and they're all to one degree or another honest actors, and I've got no problem with their behavior. So they will eventually become the philosophical atheists, to one degree or another. Why? Because they're all capable of nuanced thought. They're all smart enough. They've just been busy having the wrong conversation, basically debating dummies <laughs> about the wrong topics. <laughs> if you are an atheist, and you, you know, if you are an atheist, it's really simple. How are you supposed to read the Bible? Sensu allegorical. As allegory. As allegory. <laughs> As allegory. <laughs> Can I get it clear? Is it clear? Yeah, it's clear. As allegory. <laughs> How much of it? All of it. All of it. Nuanced. Think, this is a nuanced take on Christianity. I'm not just reading it to try to find objections to dumb guys on Twitter. <laughs> I'm reading it to actually try and understand. Doesn't mean you think you're not signing up to the metaphysics. Okay, so, so basically what am I trying to say? Now, when I was talking with Jeffrey Williams, I'll go back to that conversation for a brief second. There is very little that him and I disagree about. Why? Because he's well-grounded in philosophy and he is well-grounded in the physics. The facts. There's very little to disagree about when we were talking. It was a nice, chill conversation. That's how most of these conversations should be taking place. Why? Because the differences are subtle and they are nuanced. He will not sign off on any meta metaphysical speculations. That's why he's an atheist. I respect that. Why? There haven't been evidence to him. He's consistent. Why? He won't sign off on the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics either. Why? Same reason. It is speculating that there are multiple... <laughs> If you don't understand what the many worlds is, it is basically speculating that there are invisible, multi, infinite invisible carbon copy worlds of this ones, of this world, actual worlds, you know, that you can't see. So he won't spec, he won't sign off on that either. Why? That's metaphysical speculation. He won't do it. It's a perfectly legitimate, honest position. And in fact, that is what a, what a lacteist actually is. I don't, I just lack a belief in God. In that sense, it's consistent. How most people are using lack theists is to just make stupid conversations. Got any evidence for God? I said evidence. Data, anecdote isn't evidence. Don't you know what evidence means? That's how they're using it. <laughs> like clowns, <laughs> like the baby bro clowns. There is a mutually agreed upon series of facts, okay? There's not that much discussion to be had about the series of facts. They're the fact, period. I happen to think those facts put you immediately in theist-friendly territory. I know that for a fact. <laughs> that might be debatable, but, you know, I really don't think it is. For example, the fact, ascribing of agency is as common as grass. That doesn't mean God exists. Listen to the nuances. The question is why. Why, if God does not exist, why do people ascribe agency so easily and so completely all the time? And you actually have to do some work to turn that mechanism off. You will, you'll, it happens to atheists all the time. If you're an atheist, go look at your past. 
Go look at things you've thought. Oh, if, if, if there is a God, that was God. If there is a God, that was God. That's how your past will look to you. You have done some deliberate disconnecting of that mechanism on purpose. On purpose. Again, I'm not saying God exists. Now, one of the things that I was trying to explain, and yes, Ariana, uh, I can prove polytheism, but I am talking a very watered-down, secular version of polytheism. Do you remember I was trying to get you to watch that Crusade Against Ignorance video? The one on secular interpretations of, of polytheism? <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. That's basically provable fact. What he is talking about in that video is basically provable fact. Listen carefully. I did not say I can prove polytheism. I said a watered-down secular version of polytheism. Why? Because I'm almost positive polytheism is the default position. Bang. Just like that. Almost positive. So, Matt Dillahunty, here, here's a theory. Take it with a grain of salt, but here's a theory. Matt, Matt Dillahunty has argued in videos, the reason why we know science is true and religion is false is because if you stripped away the artifice of civilization and you, put pe and you, you reset and you put a hundred people on an island, science would come back in almost the exact same form. Why? Because it's based on facts and he said religion would disappear. Religion would not disappear. That's the point. Why? Because the as ascribing of agency is as common as grass. Bang! Religion would not disappear. It would reassert itself almost immediately, within a hundred years, as what? Polytheism. Polytheism, as far as I can tell, is primal and it is innate. It is the default position of most human beings. Polytheism. It wouldn't come back as Christianity, unless, of course, you know, God sent the Son, and here's my Son, and they would crucify him all over again. It's pretty specific. Christianity is not the most plausible of the major world religions. I readily acknowledge that. It's not even close. It's not, not even close. <laughs> the most plausible major world religion is, if you count polytheism, that's, that's the one that most people readily ascribe to. Even Christians. Even Christians. There was a whole thing way back when where you, you might know this. If you don't, just take my word for it. In, in Roman Catholicism, a lot of the times they had to try to stop people from worshiping saints because they did it almost automatically. <laughs> they do it to this day. If you're traveling, oh, we better pray to St. Anthony. He's going to watch over our travels. If you're doing this, oh, we better pray to this saint. He's going he's to protect us here. People seem to do polytheism almost automatically. It's innate. <laughs> it's innate. seems to be primal and it seems to be innate. Now... If you are talking, and this is the nuanced difference, Brenda, listen. I didn't say I can prove that they are contacting conscious agents, which would mean demons and devils and angels. No, that's metaphysical speculation. I don't do that. I don't do that here. Why? I'm trying to process all of the metaphysical speculation out of my videos and just stick to the facts. I think the facts and the facts alone gets us far enough into theist-friendly territory that nothing more needs to be said. You want to stay an atheist? Stay an atheist. You're prerogative. Not interested. I'm not. I'm, I don't care what you believe. I care how you act towards me. You're cool to me? I'm cool right back. That's it. Bang. End of discussion. <laughs> if you're clownish and try to call me out in stupid ways, and we're, you and I will have a problem. But the joke's on you. Why? Because the problem... We'll only have one or two resolutions. You will either grow up and or go home. <laughs> That's it. That's the only solution to the problem. You're either going to go away and stop bothering me, or you're going to shut your mouth and learn. Why? Because you don't know what I'm talking about yet. Nobody does. John and Jeffrey do. <laughs> Nobody else does. <laughs> I, swear to, I swear to God, it's true. That's why your objections, Brenda, were totally meaningless. Why? Because you either misunderstood or misrepresented every single sentence of everything you objected to. So you're either being dumb or dishonest. If you're still here, props, respect. This is the humble pie, eat it. This is the humble pie, eat it. I'm not saying that to hurt you. I'm saying that to help you. Why? Because you need it. When you went on talk, heathen, the only thing you were trying to prove to them is how smart you are. I'm so smart. If you're really, truly smart, you've got to understand what you're talking about first. No one's going to take you seriously until you understand what you're talking about. Yeah, you can go debate me, bro, with some imbeciles on Twitter. Reality check. They aren't worth debating. Their opinions are irrelevant. If they're so impressed with you and they go, wow, this girl is so smart, they're idiots. You start going higher up the food chain and talking to people with credibility and they're going to recognize that you don't know what you're talking about immediately. Why? Because you don't. 
You started challenging me in ludicrous ways. Jungian metaphysics is something you should have learned in 10th grade. You should have learned in 10th grade. That's the type of polytheism I can prove. Now there's a subtle, nuanced distinction between agency detection that is provable fact and devils and demons and angels. Did you hear me? Did you hear the subtle, nuanced distinction? Subtle, nuanced distinction between what? Agency detection that is provable fact and the provable fact is what I said, a watered-down, secularized version of polytheism. And I tried to explain this in the video that you challenged. And I explained it pretty clearly. You didn't get it. There's no, there's no arguing with me. You didn't get it. If you're still here, good. You will learn. You're not challenging me, which means you are humbling yourself to some degree. That's it. That's all I need to do. Humble yourself a little. Anybody else, you start processing this stuff correctly and... You can go out there and baby bro, anybody you want, they won't get anywhere near you. Why? Because they won't know what you're talking about. They won't know what you're talking about. And they'll go, word salad. <laughs> You've got to process it correctly, though. So you know what you're talking about, they won't. And you can use it to debate me, bro, clown, anybody. You've just got to have the right paradigm. Fact first. Fact first. If you start, if you... Uh, what, should I, which, what should I say first? All right, so... The 99 times out of 100, I've said this before, memorize this. The logically structured, the person with the better logically constructed argument wins the day. The better constructed argument wins 99 times out of 100. Doesn't mean they're right, it means it defeats. Why? Because it is better constructed. If you want to construct an invincible argument, you've got to do it ground up. That is the essence of science. That is the essence of science. It progresses slowly. It progresses slowly, and they're willing to throw out anything that doesn't work. So they are just dealing with the known facts. You can do apologetics the exact same way, just nobody's doing it. The mistake that most apologists make is obvious. They start with the foregone conclusion, God exists, and they massage the fact to get to the conclusion. That's the wrong approach. Ironically, just have faith. <laughs> just have faith that God exists. And let the facts speak for themselves. The facts will take you into theist-friendly territory, and the facts will take you right up to the doorstep of the Scott Ferry. Pretty sure. <laughs> yeah, pretty sure. That's what we're going to be examining. The facts. They will take you right up to the doorstep of the Sky Ferry. <laughs> and the Sky Ferry will knock on your heart, and you'll decide for yourself. <laughs> I'm the Sky Ferry. <laughs> knock, knock, knock. <laughs> will you accept me as your Savior? No. It's too weird. <laughs> Where's Jesus? Jesus! <laughs> I thought that was sorry. It's not that funny. Not that funny, Craig. Right, 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 right. I enjoyed it. You know, what do you want me to say? Um, so, let's go back into polytheism. Yes, secularized, watered down version of polytheism is essentially provable fact. Why? They are not imagining things. They, people are not ascribing agency because they are imagining things. There are real things going on. I'm not saying. That, that it's anything other than psychological. But those psychological facts agreed to collectively have ontology. I didn't say they were demons and devils, which would make them conscious agents. I said they have ontology, which means what? A life of their own. Like a virus. When Richard Dawkins said, you know, Religion is a mind virus. That is the correct way to think about all ideologies, all belief systems. They operate like a virus. They take hold in one person. Then the other person shares their opinions and their ideas with another person. Now you have two people collectively agreeing in this, to the same thing. That ideology takes on a life of its own. Why? Because it interacts with the hosts in weird and interesting ways. This is why there are so many thousands of sects of Christianity. Same thing went down. So let's say Jeffrey Williams, John Buck and I were to start our new sect of Christianity. It would be taking a little bit from all three of us and creating an entirely new thing. I didn't say a demon, a sky fairy, I didn't say a god, I didn't say anything like that. I said the ideology itself, because it is tethered to the belief systems that we brought to the table 
would create a new type of thing that would have a life of its own. Evidence of this is everywhere. That's why there's so many different sects of Christianity and they all have these weird differences. The key to getting along with people is if you focus on the things you have in common rather than the differences. It's easy. You can get along with anybody, anywhere, anytime. I swear to God that's true, guys. I swear to God. It's the only place in my life I've ever struggled to interact with people ever in my entire life. Since 7th or 8th grade. I've gone all over the world and I interact with people just like that. I can join a group of 10 people and be one of the group within 20 minutes. Hang out with them till 3-4 in the morning. I've done it hundreds of times. I swear to God, I've done it thousands of times. All over the world. In Germany, in Hollywood, in the ghetto. I can do it anywhere. It's easy to do. You just focus on the things that you have in common and the mutual agreements. And then they'll go, okay, he's one of us. It's pretty simple. The only key is you can't be arrogant know-it-all. <laughs> you got to fit in. Easy to be one of the guys, guys. Easy. Super simple. If you were one of these nerds who struggled to be one of the guys, the joke was on you. You weren't a nerd. You were debating the group instead of just fitting in, shutting your mouth and playing along. You shut your mouth, you fit in, you play along. Nobody knows if you're smart or cool or whatever. They just accept it. They just accept that you're cool. Why? Because you're one of the group. Of course he's cool. Why? He's one of us. Of course he's cool. Well, that's how it works. I swear to God, that's how it works, guys. It's the easiest thing in the world to do. Anybody who has a pack of friends that they hung around with, guys are easy to interact with like that. You just become one of the guys. The key, the key why the nerd had trouble fitting in is because they wouldn't become one of the guys. They try to debate everybody. They try to be the smartest or the leader, and they, weren't, they didn't get the pecking order. You shut your mouth and you play along and you, you know, whatever's on the, the leader says what the agenda is. What are we doing today? We're going to drink beer and listen to Zeppelin. Cool. Let's listen to Floyd instead. All right, Floyd. Cool. Are we all in? Yeah, we're all in. <laughs> That's basically how it works. What are we going to do today? We're going to drink beer and listen to Floyd. Ah, oh, I'm in. <laughs> that sounds awesome. That's it. You're one of the guys, just like that. Unless... You were the outsider who wanted to prove that you knew more about music than everybody else. Well, Floyd's last album is well that, that you were marked as the troublemaker. And you didn't fit in. And you thought it was because they, they you thought it was the, you misread the whole room. It's all that happened, guys. If you were a nerd, I promise you listen to me. I'm telling you the God's honest truth. You misread the room. That's all that happened. The agenda was fit in, play along, have a good time, and you thought it was debate everybody. In real life, guys, atheist land, atheist, listen up. If you've already tried to take your atheist land skills to outside in the real world, they blew up in your face, correct? You take it to a real place, like a party or a bar where actual living, breathing human beings interact. Everybody hates debate me, bros. Everybody. It doesn't matter if you win the debate. They hate both of you. They hate the people debating. Period. Period. That's the secret they didn't tell you. That's why atheism ain't ready for prime time. Why everybody hates intellectual bullies. They don't care who wins the debate. They think you're both idiots. That's the reality. Everybody hates them. Why? Because nobody... It, they just, I, just trust me. It's human nature 101. It's human nature 101. When you go to a par or a body out... Bar, if, you went to, if, you're, if you're an atheist and you tried your atheist debate me skills at your job, they blew up in your face, Correct? You wait, wait a minute, everyone thinks I'm an idiot, everyone thinks I'm a jerk. Why? Because nobody wants to deal with that. That's not interacting with people. That's conflicting with people. That's trying to prove you're smarter than people. Nobody likes people who do that. Period. You will be marked. What? As the troublemaker, the guy to avoid, the outsider, the nerd, the one who doesn't get it. Why? Because you don't get it. Atheists don't do that with each other. I don't think when they're out there, like when they're having their atheist powwows, they're not debating each other. They're palling around, having to trying to have a good time. Okay, that's the point. If someone can't relax around you and have a good time, they don't want you. They don't want you wrapped. It's that simple. And nobody wants to. I, that's why you know I'm not an intellectual snob in even the slightest sense of the word ever at all. Why? Because you have the most fun with dumb guys. You, my, my wife and I have the most fun at dumb movies. <laughs> That's the movies we like the most. <laughs> the, with the explosions and the car crashes. Why? Because they're fun. We're not there to have an intellectual time. We're there to relax. 
and forget about things for two hours and watch dinosaurs chase people around and try to eat them. Oh my God, get away. Dinosaurs trying to eat you. We're there to have a good time. We're not there to, you know, sometimes every once in a while, yeah, we'll go see like a highbrow art film. Normally they're overrated. There are some that are worth the price of admission because they're legitimate classics and they'll make you think and they'll, you know, I forget what the ones I've mentioned before, La Strada, um, 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 the, all the Kurosawa films, or most of the Kurosawa films, Seven Seal, Seven Seal, that's uh, the Bergman, there's a whole bunch of them. But a lot of times my wife and I will just go to see a movie to have a good time. To watch dinosaurs. <laughs> the dinosaurs are chasing them off the island. They better run. To, oh my god, the dinosaurs are going to get them. Oh, phew, they got away. <laughs> That's why we're at the movie dinner. We're to have a good time for two hours and forget about life. <laughs> oh my god, here comes another dinosaur. We better run this way. <laughs> the best thing in the world, I swear to god, the best experience in the world, you go see a, a horror movie in Times Square in New York City. It's the most fun you'll ever have in your life. Because the people are insane and they shout at the screen. And there's always like a big, like this woman who stand up and go, Don't, don't go in that room. Go outside. Go outside. And she'll be standing up in the middle of the theater. It's so fun. That's why we go to the movie. That's not all, the only time we go to the movies. You know, we go see a highbrow, a good movie like Schindler's List or something like that. I think my wife and I went to see that twice. Oh no, I wasn't. Uh, I think we saw Saving Private Ryan twice, if I remember correctly. I saw it like four times because I was blown away by it. The first, the first half hour of that movie is unbelievable. It's the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life. It's the, one of the most powerful sequences in film. So I went to see it four times. I think I saw it once with my wife, and then I forget, once with my, my mother and father, once with some friends from New York City, and then maybe twice with my wife. Maybe that's what I'm thinking of. But, anyways, let's see. Rambling, rambling. That's the deal. Oh, wow. That went quick. <laughs> what was I talking about? That went really quick. Um, 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 so, whatever I was saying at the beginning of the video, that's the truth. <laughs> yeah, those were all really good points. Think about them. I don't remember what I started the video on. Um, it honestly really doesn't matter. When I say one video is coming out where I'll re-examine and, you know, the most of the stuff, most of the territory that I'm covering feeds into each other and they're all part of the same package. Um, the first person to internalize the stuff I'm saying in these videos wins. My money's on Ron, could easily be Stephanie. <laughs> My money's on Ron or Stephanie. <laughs> Yay! Put your money on me, Craig! I'll kill that Ron! I'll go all testament his ass! He won't even know what happened! Well, wow, all right, calm down, Stephanie. <laughs> calm down, Stephanie. No, I'll kill that Ron! I'm so fed up with him! It's just a Midwestern draw. What does he think this is? <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes somebody you gotta watch her because she gets, she gets. All right, easy there, Stephanie. I'll debate him. I'll debate him. I swear to God, I will. I'll crush him. I'll crush his skull. <laughs> okay, calm down, Stephanie. Calm down. Easy. I believe you. Um, Ron, you got a challenge? <laughs> Apparently, Stephanie wants to throw down. You know, knock stuff out. Um, I guess that's all for now. Yeah, a little rambly and off topic, but whatever. Whatever. Um, can I sum it all up in a pretty little package? No. The, the nuances are the important part. If you are not catching the nuances of the things I am trying to talk about, you aren't doing this correctly. If you are, if you are trying to understand philosophy of mind and quantum mechanics and some of the, the higher end philosophy things I'm talking about, you either struggle to understand that stuff, which requires humility, which requires humility, because you're struggling to understand it or you aren't doing it correctly. There's no room at the table for debate me bro antics. None. Zero. There's only one message, and this could be to anybody. Doesn't necessarily mean Brenda. She's just the one who <laughs> walked into my line of fire. I didn't put her there. She put herself there. I debate you, Craig. I'll kill you. <laughs> I didn't put her there. She put herself there. And if you are still listening, Brenda, again, props. This is what you need. Humble pie. This is what all of you need. Humble pie. Humble. Be humble and lovable. Be humble and lovable. Why? Because this stuff is hard to understand. If you think you nailed it, jokes on you, pff, you have no idea what time it is. The top shelf atheists are having conversations in this space that are more or less irrelevant, except for Shannon. 
Shannon is the one who is sometimes a philosophical atheist, sometimes a top shelf atheist. Okay, she, the, the top shelf atheist will convert to philosophical atheists. There's no choice. There's no choice. Why? Because most of the videos they've been putting out for the last 10 years are irrelevant. Irrelevant. I told you the example of rationality rules. He's considered top shelf atheist. I put him in that category. I got no issue with the guy. I'm not complaining about his behavior at all. Uh, if, you, if, if nobody is disrespecting me, I'm not intending to disrespect you. If I'm trashing your video, I'm doing it, you know, as a corrective. <laughs> I'm doing it as a corrective and not trying to be too harsh. But his philosophy of mind video is absolute, absolutely abysmal. Now, that's four years ago. So I'm assuming he's kept, got himself a little bit more up to speed on philosophy of mind. But that type of junk engagement won't work anymore. It won't. Why? Too many people here who know what they're talking about. So it won't work anymore. It may work for another six months, seven months, a year, but I would get up to speed now. Why? Because it ain't going to work past that. Promise. <laughs> There's no other option. The, uh, the thing that I'm saying to Brenda, I could be saying to everybody, grow up or go home. There's not going to be any other option. The, the baby bro clowns, everybody under Brenda, who's not as intelligent as Brenda and isn't capable of nuanced thought, they're going to disappear. Why? There's no other choice. They can't compete. That is why there's just a tension between them and the philosophical atheists. That's the tension. The philosophical atheists are capable of nuanced thought. The debate me bro clowns are not. They're idiots. A pack of idiots to a man. That's why they're not squaring off against me. Because they're also paradoxically intellectual bullies. They're not squaring off against me because they're not that stupid. They know I can smoke them. They just don't know how. I try to debate them. You debate them. I don't want to debate them. You debate them. You debate them. It's word salad. I promise you it's word salad. It's got to be word salad. Debate them. You debate them. I'll debate them. I swear to God, if they would, they could. If they could, they would. That's how you know that Brenda didn't score a single point against me in two weeks of tagging each one of my videos. Why? Because if she did, all the atheists, all the debate bro clowns would have piled on top of me. When they thought Lucky Charlie had me on the ropes, they showed up. Ah, oh, he they didn't understand what we were talking about. I swear to God they didn't. <laughs> but they thought that Lucky Charlie was smart enough to be convincing like he knew what he was talking about. He didn't. <laughs> he didn't. Lucky see if that's you, you know, you didn't. I promise. Ask Jeff, he'll tell you. <laughs> he didn't. <laughs> it's pretty crystal clear. You can't fake it at these levels, guys. You can't. You can't fake it at these levels. And if you aren't at these levels, get up to speed. Why? Because the levels that you've been having these discourses on are irrelevant. They're for it. The conversations in this space for the last 10 years have been for idiots. Bang! Got all of you. Been irrelevant. The people who are capable of nuanced thought, Vice Rhino, Prophet of Zod, and those guys, the top shelf atheists, have not been engaging with nuanced thought. They've been engaging fundamentalist Christians as if they're still fundamentalists. They're capable of nuanced thought, they just haven't been applying it to religion. I don't know why they haven't been doing that. I guess they think they don't have to. They do have to. Why? Because it's not good enough. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> it's not because they haven't been good enough. Their videos aren't worth watching at this point. they got to up their game. They want to stay in the fight. You know, they're all, they're all smart guys. I'm not, I'm not dissing them intellectually at all. They're definitely bright, capable human beings, intellectually-wise. They've just been practicing in, in you know, if you, if you stay in, engaged with people who aren't worth engaging and you just run propaganda machines, you get dumber and you get slower. Why? Because you start dumbing down to fit the environment and you get applauded for things you shouldn't be being applauded for. General rule of thumb. If you're, if you're an atheist and your audience is really high five and excited about what you did, you probably did something stupid and wrong. Why? Because that's the only thing they applaud. That's the only thing they applaud. Stupidity. <laughs> I swear to God, that's true. I swear to God, that's true. That's the only thing they applaud. Stupid points. <laughs> they never applaud intelligence. Watch. Shannon's the barometer. Sometimes Shannon's intelligence and nuance. I bet you a thousand bucks they tell her she shouldn't be when she is. She's the cutoff. Why? Because she sometimes is a philosophical atheist. She'll be the first person I expect to go full, full philosophy. Why? Because she's capable of it. She's pretty sharp. She's a nuanced thinker. She just doesn't always apply the nuance correctly because she's, you know, trying to be applauded by people whose opinions she shouldn't even care about.
Well, it's just not relevant. <laughs> <They're> idiots. <laughs> Good work. <laughs> it's a complete bozo. Who cares what that guy thinks? I don't know. It could be anybody. Anybody dumber than Brenda, their opinion's irrelevant. Brenda is the cutoff. And Brenda, if you're still here, many props. <laughs> the humble pie is what you need. I'm not trying to hurt you at all. This is what you need. You could easily be smart as you think you are, but you have to learn first, which means, you know, grapple with things you don't understand. <laughs> That's what it means. Did you watch the Jungian metaphysics video? It's only an hour and a half long. You debated me, bro, for three hours after I posted that video. You should have watched that video. You will understand most of it if you watch it twice. No, those guys aren't goofball, woo artists, and then they're a hundred times more credible and intelligent than you. But Bernardo Kastrup is more credible and intelligent than me. Did you hear me say that? Did I struggle to say that? Bernardo Kastrup is more intelligent and credible than me. A lot more. Did I struggle to say that? No. What's the issue here? Humility is the issue. Humility is the issue. It's the honest to God issue. Did I struggle? Bernardo Casper is a hundred times more intelligent and credible than me. If we get him on the channel, I'm going to be learning, not confronting, not teaching. Why? It's not appropriate. It's like a fourth grader trying to play basketball against an adult. There is no way on earth I could score a point against him. I readily acknowledge that. If you don't think that's true of you, grow up. Humble yourself. It's a hundred times more true of you than it is of me. Why? Because I got to jump on you, whoever you are. I swear to God, I do. <laughs> no, you don't. Oh, yeah, try me. <laughs> try me. Debate me, clown. <laughs> of course I do. <laughs> you don't even know what I'm talking about half the time. A hundred times more credible than me. It's not hard for me to say that. It shouldn't be hard for anybody to say that. Why? Because we aren't all that, guys. We're really not. This is a YouTube member. This is a YouTube video. Remember with the environment. <laughs> I don't know. I thought that was really funny. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm cracking myself up. Nobody else, nobody else will have it, Craig. All right, well, you know, sometimes I crack myself up. That's the key to being a successful comic. <laughs> That's the key. Why? You don't care if anybody else is laughing. You're laughing at your own jokes and having a good old time doing it. That's, my wife told us that a long time ago. Well, a lot of times I'll just say the same things over and over again just because I can't get a weird charge at Statham and try for crazy for like three hours. I swear to God, I say like the same things over and over again just to see how she processes it and try for crazy for like three hours straight. <laughs> oh, man. I thought it was funny. I realized I thought it was funny. All right, all right. I'll try to. I'll try to do better. <laughs> I apologize. I'll try to. I'll try to grow up. <laughs> I'll try to grow up, <laughs> and then uh, I won't have to go home. Oh. <laughs> oh man. I don't know. I just thought that was really funny. It's true. I swear to God, I drive my wife crazy. I drive my wife crazy. Say it's <laughs> just weird. I'll, I'll get into it at some point in videos to come. Tell you the things I say to her 500 times a day just to see how she processes it. <laughs> oh man. All right. So that was fun. I don't know if this will go up on video proper or I don't even know if I'm using BitChute anymore. <laughs> Anyways, so that is all for now, kids. As always, this is a YouTube video reality check. It's just for fun. Have fun. This is dinosaurs eating the kids. This is dinosaurs chasing everybody around, trying to eat children. It's for fun. It's a YouTube video. This isn't a physics paper or a philosophy exam. This is basically dinosaurs chasing people around, trying to eat them. And the only question is, are they going to get away in time? <laughs> Oh my god, this time they're in trouble. Why? Because those are velociraptors. Those guys are going to eat them for sure. <laughs> Alright, not funny. I thought it was for really honest and thought it was funny. Alright, so uh, I'll be quiet. <laughs> Mass is ending. Alright, I'll be quiet. <laughs> be quiet, 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 fine. <laughs> Mass is ending. Go in peace. Amen.